Welcome to the Beat 139. I'm Doc. I'm Don Vito. How y'all feeling? How's everybody doing on, on a happy Friday? It's the weekend. We got the Super Bowl this weekend. It's cold out there, but I know people coming out for that Super Bowl. So tonight, tonight, folks, we're extremely excited to have a special guest with us, known as the Love Man with his signature voice, smooth, silky, baritone voice, the host of the nationally syndicated radio show, The Quiet Storm. Everybody know about The Quiet Storm with my man Lenny Green, WBLS 107.5 FM. Welcome to the show, Mr. Lenny Green. How you doing, buddy? Welcome. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I am Good to have you here, bro. I, 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 I got a clock right here, man. But, um, I'm honored to be here. And you know what, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you can't see what goes on in front of them, I'm looking at a beautiful portrait okay. of a bridge. Now, that bridge is very significant to me. Okay, talk about it. Talk it's about the Brooklyn it. Bridge. The Brooklyn, exactly. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm from Brooklyn. Okay. Absolutely. Now, I know where I'm at, but I'm from Brooklyn, born and yeah, raised. Yeah, I, wear yeah. that, I wear that striped pretty proud. Yeah, I'm just about to ask you that, too. You know? <laughs> I born and raised in Brooklyn, yeah. man. Uh, born, in, born in Crown Heights. Mm -hmm. Raised in Bushwick, mm -hmm. Canarsie. Strongly in East New York and Bed Stuy, so uh, I, I wear that stripe. But here's the here's the crazy part about it: family moved to Harlem right before I came into the world. Oh wow! My brother was born in Harlem Hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, my mama went to church in Harlem. My mama loved Harlem. Right. She lived up on a, they lived up on 143rd, 44th Street. Okay. Um, this is before Lenny became Lenny, okay. and uh, I was born in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. uh, Thirteen or twelve years later. Okay, BK. So, uh, okay. so Harlem has always the is in my DNA right. because family was here. Uh, my mom's church was in Harlem. My church is in Harlem. Okay, what church is that? Abyssinian. Okay, Abyssinian Baptist. So. You know, it's crazy because I always thought you were from Harlem. Like you, really? your energy filled Harlem. Like you did the Harlem honors with us. Like, yes, sir. Yes, I sir. always thought yes, you were from Harlem. Well, that, that's deep. Well, you know what? I, I wear I wear the tri-state of New York. Man. I'm very, very <laughs> Absolutely, proud of you, brother. Yeah. You know, it's something about us when we come from New York. So. I think we all represent each other's boroughs, even though we are in specific boroughs. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, I'm sure. honored to be here, but thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I, I've heard, heard a lot about the show. <laughs> I, I've been uh, I've been watching you guys periodically when I'm not working, mm -hmm. and uh, that's all the time. But yeah. congratulations on yeah, this wonderful, successful podcast. Yeah. Man. Well, I definitely appreciate that because, like, like V said, it's an honor to us to even have somebody at your status to come. You you're still relevant to this day, and and. Mm -hmm. Your topics, your relationship topics, like you know, we we we, we catch you every day except the Wednesday. Is you on the same time we on? I know, I know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, they're my competition, but you know what? <laughs> but you know what? Competition is good because it helps you grow, exactly. helps you stay relevant, it helps you stay yeah. sharp. So I am uh, just privileged, man. So thank you, gentlemen, for man. allowing me to be in your in your space tonight. We're glad to have you, man. So you Brooklyn Brooklyn native. <laughs> Yes, sir. Boy, and right. um, so a lot of people don't know that you try to perform when you was young. Did yeah, yeah. Stuff yeah, like yeah. See, all I'm connected once again. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, at nine years old, yeah. no one told, no one could have told me I was going to be doing radio. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was huge Jackson Five, Michael Jackson fan. Mm -hmm. uh, you couldn't tell me that I was not going to be the second invention of a Michael Jackson. <laughs> uh, I, I was so much into Michael Jackson, I had my mama find me that corduroy coat. Okay. Uh, that, it was a brown corduroy coat, tan mm -hmm. corduroy coat, and she found that. Right. It wasn't the exact coat, right. but it looked exact to uh -huh. me. And between that and using my little plastic microphone, I would get up and perform in, uh, in my living room, man, and uh, just have a ball. And I stayed on the, on the singing tip for a long time, mm -hmm. actually until I got to college. I went to Kingsborough Community College in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and that's when I that's why I got exposed to radio, and then singing was like forget and that. Then, and then you yeah. moved to um, Richmond, Virginia, or something like that. that. That was the first break, but you know yeah. the college radio thing. College radio okay. is is where I got my roots from. Right, you know what I'm saying. And you know what's funny? I always want to ask you this, right? Um, <clears throat> your your voice, like. By you speaking the way you speak, your voice, like, it's the stinger's voice. Everybody knows your voice. Like, he didn't know you, but he said, oh, I know that voice. Yeah. That got you into um, radio? You know what? I was singing. Didn't think about radio. Wasn't right. doing nothing related to radio. I would listen to the voices. At that time, it was Frankie Crocker, Vaughn Harper, mm -hmm. Ken Webb, Gary Bird, who was still doing and going very, very strong. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Fr uh, Fred Bugsy Bugs, and all these cats, man. So it was coming into my ear, coming into my DNA like it came into everybody else's. Mm -hmm. But I guess, you know, just like with anything, if you continue to work at it and work at it and work at it, 
it, it just kind of takes a, a shape of its own. Right. And then by me being influenced by the yeah. voices that I heard mm -hmm. back in the day, I guess I got better. But trust, and, trust me what I tell you, my voice wasn't developed to where it is now when I first started. Oh, right. okay. okay. It wasn't. Okay. But by me constantly mm -hmm. listening to their styles, mm -hmm. listening to how they presented themselves, I started reading papers and magazines out loud, and I guess I was imitating them, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I guess after a while, a little bit of them rubbed off on me. Yeah. Uh, it's just like when you hear a preacher. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you hear a preacher, it's like, oh, he got that preacher voice. I guess I got that radio voice, but by my influence, because I was influenced by So you started, radio. like, singing first. Yes. And then you went to assistant program director. Well, that was a big jump years later when I first started. Before you turned into a, 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 a host. Well, yeah. Before yeah. I took, well, you know, once I got into that college radio station, right. they gave me at Kingsburg Community College, which is, I'm, I'm happy to tell your listeners mm -hmm. that they have a, a wonderful radio and TV program at right. that community college. Okay. So I got involved with that radio station. They gave me a, a show, a seven hour show. Mm. The crazy part is oh. seven is a, um, it's a, a very spiritual number. Mm -hmm. Seven has always been associated with me, even to this day. Mm -hmm. I start my show at seven o'clock. Yeah, okay. um, my, my college radio show started at seven o'clock. Mm -hmm. So I, I did that for like a year and a half. And then I got out of school. And then I didn't, the, the assistant program director stuff didn't even happen. Mm -hmm. I just started getting out in the field. I, I worked at uh, Channel 5, right. which is Fox yeah. now. And then I worked in um, a radio syndication company that used to do shows. Right. They would they would bring celebrities in, the host would sit down with the celebrities, they would take the conversation mm -hmm. and then they would cut it up and then they would send it out to people. Mm -hmm. Then I worked for a company that owned 98.7 Kiss. Right, that's what we're talking about. And yeah. then uh, I was just ripping paper right. off of the machines mm -hmm. and giving it to the anchors, right. the news anchors, to, right. for them to read. Mm -hmm. So. That assistant program director stuff didn't happen until I got to New Haven, Connecticut. And that was, that was years later, man. Much, much, much further down the road. Yeah, um, not to uh, go back to what we talked about, but I don't know if you remember the story. The reason why I asked you about your voice, and other people was curious too, everybody was saying the guy sounds just like you. you. You remember maybe like, I can't remember, maybe five, six years ago, a homeless guy. Oh, yeah. He, he had a voice that sounds similar to yours. Yeah. Um, and he was homeless, and, and they put him on because his voice. Horse. Yeah, yeah I think he, was, he was all over the news for he a little while. He was all over his news. Yeah, they yeah. heard him. He's homeless. Yeah. He's asking for guy? money. He, yeah. it, it he sounds was popular for a little while. To, to yeah. He was huge. Um, yeah. and, and here's what, it's a rags to riches. Right. Back to, back to riches story. Mm -hmm. So he was doing that. He was going up the cars. Yeah. And, he, and he would, I guess he had, his sign said that he was a radio guy, and somebody videotaped it. It went viral. Yeah, right. Yeah. Over yeah. Winfrey. Found mm -hmm. out about yeah. it, mm -hmm. and all these other people. I think he's from Ohio. Yeah, Ohio. And, and yeah. they they put they gave him an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he fell on bad times. Mm -hmm. Got caught up in drugs. Right. All that went away. Right. He's back now, so he's doing great things. I'm so happy for oh, that yeah. brother. He's doing great things. He's doing great commercial campaigns, and that's wow. what a lot of folks don't pay attention to. They just think about the radio thing, mm -hmm. right? But the big money is in the voiceover. Right. That's the big money. You do voiceovers. I'm trying to get into <laughs> voiceovers. That's big money. Yeah. Uh, if you really, I mean, and, and people, you know, of our age, they come to, uh, they, they may ask me from time to time, hey, man, I want to get started in radio. I say, you really know. Because mm -hmm. radio, if you didn't get in at a certain age, mm -hmm. but you can still make money on that, on your voice. Right. Yeah, if right. you just study voiceover work. Mm -hmm. One sentence. Mm -hmm. You can make four thousand. They got classes. Wow. Right? They have certain classes. There was a, a, another radio legend out of New York called G. Keith Alexander. Mm -hmm. I yeah, he I used know. to be on WBLS back in the day. Right. He started a, a thing called the Voiceover Academy mm. here in New York City, and um, I don't know if it's still existing. I, I think it is, but he, G. Keith Alexander, is the king of voiceovers. He's made a wonderful career after radio, making a lot of money doing voiceover work. Mm -hmm. And then voiceover work led to him being on camera, on TV. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage you, I'm still trying to break into this game mm -hmm. of voiceover work. But voiceover work, we realize now, is also animation. Right. 
which is huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you can think of any commercial that you see on the radio, I'm here on the radio, or any commercial that you don't hear, don't see the announcer, but you hear the voice, mm -hmm. that's voice over work. That little gecko on Geico, yeah, yeah, I yeah, wish yeah. I was that gecko. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. voice yeah. is making a lot of money. A lot yeah. of money. Yeah. So yeah. think about voice over work. Yeah, yeah, wow. I'm still trying to break into that, brothers. I'm going to think about that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to look into it. I'm I'm looking at it. I, when you look into that the yeah. right way, yeah. study it, and, and as long as you can play with the many personalities that you have, mm -hmm. because we can't, you know, yeah. radio is theater of the mind. Right. Back in the day, um, people would sit in front of their radio, like we'd sit in front of our TVs and look at the radio mm -hmm. and envision what was being said because they would create Absolutely, theater. Yeah, right. So radio is yeah. still an invisible, an invisible media. Yeah, it is. It is. You know, but but I'm telling you, if I could drop a seed of awareness into both of your souls tonight, mm -hmm. I would say, look into voiceover. Voice it yeah. is huge, huge, huge. I'm gonna check that yeah, out too. Yeah. <laughs> so Joe from definitely. Lenny Green right here. Yeah, you know? definitely Joe. So um, I'm curious, right? So how was your experience at um? 98.7 KISS. So prior to coming to 98.7 KISS, um, to, to go back, like you said, yeah. um, my first radio gig started in Richmond, yes. Virginia. Right. A uh, little small AM station in Richmond, Virginia. Stayed there for like maybe almost a year. Mm -hmm. from, from, New, from Virginia, I, I saw a job opening, um, a part-time job opening, on, only on Saturdays and Sundays mm -hmm. in New Haven, Connecticut. Okay. Another AM station. Black formatted station, 24 hour station. It was at the time, it was the only 24 hour black radio station in Connecticut. Yeah. Stayed there, and that's where I really cut and cut and learned my chops in terms of learning style and and just being on the radio regularly. And then after that, um, a blessing came, and I knew somebody who I met years ago who used to remember that syndication company I told you that they used to uh, bring people of uh, the announcers in and they would interview the artists and yeah. they sent out the stuff. Yeah. This brother used to interview some of those uh, artists from time to time. Mm -hmm. And what ended up happening, he ended up becoming a very, very, very valuable uh, resource for me. Because one of his best friends that he grew up with was Vinnie Brown. Mm -hmm. Vinnie Brown was the program director at 98.7 Kiss. Okay. The job in New Haven, Connecticut, the radio station went to black, meaning they shut their doors down. They went bankrupt. So when he heard about it, I bumped into him, and he said, hey, man, the next time you in New York, I'll call my buddy Vinnie Brown up. I'm like, man, I've known you 10 years. Mm -hmm. I didn't know Vinnie Brown was your friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was a man of his word. Yeah. And I uh, came by, he called him up. The next day, I had an interview. Mm -hmm. Vinnie Brown used these words, and I'm going to say these words if I can remember precisely. He said, I heard about you, brother. Um, I don't have a job for you. I have all my slots are filled. But would you take what I have? Wait, you don't have a job for me, but will I take what you have? Well, what do you have? I don't have a job, but I, I, I only that I can tell you is that we'll keep you in mind. Mm -hmm. Do you want that? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I want whatever I can't see. I want whatever is not available. Exactly. Right. Yes. Three weeks later, he called me up. He says, look, I still don't have any on-air positions available. This is at 98.7 Kiss. Yeah. But my music director has to take a leave of absence for a minute. I just need you to come in, open up the mail, and answer the phones. I can only pay you $10 an hour. Do you want it? Yes, sir. Yeah. I went from not being in the building right. to being in the building now. Right. Yeah. I had experience being on air. Right. Yeah. They didn't want me for that. Right. Can you answer the phone mm -hmm. and open up you the mail? No. I could do that. Yeah, <laughs> humble yourself. I could do that. Yeah, right. but because in my mind I said, should somebody call in sick one day? Mm -hmm. I'm here. Yeah, it is. Should somebody need? Can somebody read this commercial? I could do that. Yeah. Can you do this? I could do that. Mm -hmm. I was the bottom of the barrel. Right. I'll do it. Right. Right. Someone called and said, like maybe three months later. Uh, yeah, Lenny, can you do middays? Can I do middays? I was nervous as shit. <laughs> yeah, I could imagine. <laughs> Man, 98.7. Like, 98.7. Yeah. Yeah. Back yeah. then, they had the, the rap, too. What? They had the yeah. rap and r &B back yeah. then. Had Brother, been. I was nervous beyond nervous. Nervous beyond nervous. But <laughs> God doesn't put you in something you can't handle. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. So I knew this was my moment. Look, 
in this game and in certain games in life, you get maybe one chance up at bat. Exactly. I tell yeah. people that all the time. You can't strike out. Yeah, you yeah. can't. And this is New York, baby. New yeah. York. You yeah. cannot strike out. Well, you better, if you can't hit the home run, at least yeah. hit the grass line. Something. Something. Hit the ball somewhere. You can't strike out. No, you can't strike out. Especially 98.7. Nah. That was huge back then. Oh, my then. God. Back so, then, it was huge. Big yeah. opportunity, too. Huge, huge. Yeah, yeah. And so I got through it, man. I did it. And uh, they were cool. I didn't lose my job. And and then, as as the story would be told, I, I stayed with 98.7 Kiss, wow, for like 17 years. Yeah. And I went from not having a job to mm -hmm. opening up the mail, answering the phones, to hosting Kissing After Dark. Yeah, Kissing uh, After Dark. The, yeah, yeah. the love show. Yeah, yeah love show. So, God has been good. Actually. But you know but you know what's crazy, though? And this is why I'm glad you said the story. I love stories. <laughs> but stories is, is like, to listen, they love it. Because mm -hmm. you, you gain out of it instead of, you know, just listening. And it, it's showing the viewers, like my son here, just to, to open your eyes how, it, what it takes. Yeah. What it takes, the steps you took, as far as, you know, like I said, open the mail. Then um, you being available, and then also to give the guy credit, he saw something in you. For him to even call you back, call me back, yeah. They say, yo, I still don't have nothing, but you could come do this, because he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to do that. And for him to do that, that's a a, a a check on you. Like, man, he saw something in you. For him to sit there and say, I don't have nothing, but would you, you know? Well, you know what? All of us have the potential of doing things if we're just given an opportunity to do it. Yeah. The only thing is, and you do have to see, you know, because I have interns now, mm -hmm. and you know, some interns I've had didn't measure up to the level. Right. Everybody want, everybody sees the shiny apple, mm -hmm. but not everybody can grab it. Right. Because they still have yet to learn some things, and unfortunately, the generation, the younger generation these days, they have to understand who walks before them. A lot of them just see it, and they just want to jump for the. Right. The, the, the golden, the platinum apple. Right. And you got to learn the steps. You got to understand yeah, you the You got to crawl before you walk. You do. And you and I study the legends. Yes. And I used to go to the radio conventions and I would sit up there and I would see all these. All, I knew all the big reels mm -hmm. from Vinnie Brown to all the other cats who were at radio stations. I knew about the Tom Joyners, the Doug Banks, that they were really, really popular at the time. Yeah, Doug they Banks. covered the country. Yeah. They covered the country. They were in syndication. Yeah, in syndication for I didn't even know what syndication yeah. was. But I just knew they they were everywhere. Yeah, Tom Jordan and um and Doug Banks were syndicated for a long time. Actually, Tom Jordan was first. Yeah. And I think Tom Jordan opened up the door for Doug. Doug Banks, yeah. And Doug came in, and Tom Jordan got the um, got the title of uh, Fly Jock. Yeah, yeah. Because he did mornings in Chicago, mm -hmm. and then got on the plane and did afternoons the same day. Wow. So he did that wow. for years, yeah. and. Uh, he he paid his stripes. I think this year in 2019, I heard rumor has it that he may he may decide to retire. Put time, he put his time in. But yeah. what a blessing! He's a legend. Yeah, he's a like Hal Jackson. Yeah, Hal Jackson. Yeah, Hal Jackson, Jackson. Hal Jackson yeah. worked in radio till he was 90. Yeah, blessing. Damn. You know? So I, how long you been at BLS now? Um, surprisingly, I've been at BLS seven years. Mm -hmm. There goes the seven again. Yeah, wow. seven years. Seventeen. Play that seven. <laughs> That's seven, huh? Seven, yeah. Seven. Nah, it's a blessing. I, I'm so thankful. And your I'm show grateful. is syndicated. The show is now syndicated. Um, we are in um, eight markets. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're in eight markets. So we, we go from Louisiana to Grand Rapids, Michigan, to Arkansas, to Oklahoma, to Georgia, to uh, North Carolina, and we're in Nassau, Bahamas. And, and you know, WBLS is so, has a strong history. So ever since the 70s, uh, BLS has been online, mm -hmm. unlike a lot of other radio stations. So we have people from all over the world, yeah, literally, yeah. that listen yeah. to the station online every night. WBLS is one of the longest running radio yeah. shows in and, history. And right? at one time, one of the longest running black owned. Yeah. Yeah, black uh, unfortunately, owned, yeah. not black owned no yeah. more. Uh, however, now I think Kathy Hughes yeah. would be the only minority largest. What was that other radio station that was on um, AM? W Super 16. Super w 16. W -R -L. W -R -L. That's where all the cats, that's where yeah. Frankie Crockett got. Yeah, yeah, Super yeah, 16. Yeah, yeah. Bledsoe, yeah. W -R -L, yeah. Don Early Allen. Mm -hmm. There was cats, man. And again, I didn't know yeah. that I was going to be doing this radio thing, but I would hear all these voices. Because they was bigger than, than FM at the time. Yes, sir. But also, what I like, also, like something you just, you know, lighten us to, when you like, I went to the radio conventions, oh, yeah. and that's something that we we, we, we talk. We have our uh, meetings all the time while our staff. We trying to get to more, trying to just do a lot of things like that, like try to, you know, 
insert ourselves and in, and in, in do outside the norm. And I think you know what they they downsize the the industry now is downsized. You know they lost a lot of money. There's not a lot of record companies mm -hmm. that used to be, and they've eliminated just about all <clears throat> excuse me all radio conventions. Um, there may be one left, mm -hmm. but I would encourage you brothers if there is one uh, that you get out there because the key thing is networking. Yes. It's important that people see you. It's important that you put a card in their hand. Mm -hmm. It's important that you see what they do. It's important that you sit back and observe what they do. It's important that um, you just make that relationship because 96% of this game is relationships. Yep. It's re building rapports with people. Yeah. I never wanted to be, and there are some people that have been very, very successful with it, the shock jock. Yeah. Like, I never, I knew about the controversy that happened in a lot of artists' lives. If I get an artist to sit down with me, my thing, especially if I'm meeting them for the first time, is to build is to build a bond, build a relationship, right. create that. I'm not here to ask the the question of questions that's gonna piss them off, right. and they're gonna walk out the door, right. and now I'm kind of tarnished. Right. I'm tarnished by the artist, I'm tarnished by the, the industry, the, the reps that brought them in. Mm -hmm. We don't wanna bring the artists anymore of our artists up here because this right. guy's gonna go left. Yeah, yeah. I kinda of keep it respectful. Yeah, same I've way kept we do it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And, and you go along, look, Wendy Williams, I love her dearly, but she, she made a living. She made that a was living. Her thing. Yeah, but not too many people yeah. can get over like that. Yeah. Not too, well, that's where black folks can get Exactly, over. <laughs> that's what I mean, you know. For sure, yeah. and, and for her to do what she has done, yeah. and now she's, she's She's a mega, mega star when it comes to, to TV. Mm -hmm. I, I applaud Wendy for all that she's done. Yeah. She took a lot of chances. Yes, she did. And She uh, rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, and she still made it through. She made it through. She took some hard knocks for that. Yes, she did. Uh, but now she has surfaced to a great level mm -hmm. uh, and where everyone is starting to come back around and, and see her. And she's grown. Yeah. You know, but, you know, when you get into the game, not everybody can do that. Right. Like you said, not yeah, everybody, everybody can, can do that. that. Yeah. But I want to jump in for a minute, like something that you just touched on about building relationships and, and rubbing elbows and, and networking. A lot of people ask me, are you always out? I said, well, you know, I'm one of the represent re representatives of the Big 139. Right. You know, us three right here, we move around because we have to move around. This is what we have to network. We have to put our card in somebody's hand. Yep. We have to get out there so people can eat. And we go out, people, hey, the beat one, three, nine. It makes us feel good because we see we get more and more popular, but yep. we have to get out there. We, it's like me, me and you have been at a couple of events already. All right. You know, and, and I talk to you and we, we get along real good. But if I would have moved around, I would have never met you. Well, let me tell you something. See what I'm talking about? Yep. Nice. Um, and now, see, this is podcast, which is the next trend. You're, you guys are at a great level right now because mm -hmm. just, you're a part of the trend that's growing. Yes. But it's it's radio. Yes. It's podcast radio. That's what it is. Exactly. I started in this AM thing of radio. Mm -hmm. AM radio and black radio in particular. Black radio was always a community-based radio station. Black radio was responsible for keeping people in our communities abreast of what was going on, right. not only music industry-wise, but just politically, socially. Mm -hmm. We were connected to the community, and that's what the community has grown to expect from us. Yes. No different when podcasting. Yeah. You have to make yourself connected to your community. Mm. Now, obviously, you guys cover the world yeah. because you're online. Mm -hmm. um, you can't touch everybody in the world, but that doesn't mean when you get to whatever country or whatever city you're going to, you cannot tell them about. You cannot hold back from telling them about the B139. Exactly. It's your job. Right. And, 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 and you, you, should be, you should want that. And at the same token, you should want to obtain information because you, you, know, you guys have a platform where there's no restrictions. Mm -hmm. Unlike commercial radio, right. there may be restrictions. You got a management team, yeah. you got the FCC right. that really kind of holds you back from saying information. Right. The problems that's happening uh, in in politics or in our communities, you know, we have if we have high crime, if we have high homelessness. Yeah. It's it's you it's the guy. What you guys can do to affect that and and to bring awareness to that is really important. So you know what happened. My philosophy is, and, and I'm syndicated, it's true, but what happens in Chicago could happen in New York, mm -hmm. could happen in Atlanta, could happen in North Carolina. So we are all the same people right. and living in different parts of the world. Right. Those 15 people that were found frozen to death in Chicago, look, mm -hmm. the weather has been crazy in New York, crazy. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could have very well happened here. It may have happened here. Maybe it hasn't been 15 people because 
unfortunately the homeless is people are people that a lot of people don't pay attention to yeah but and so if it doesn't get to the news we don't know anything about it unfortunately exactly. yeah. but this is where you brothers come in so i applaud you brothers for being out in the community and meeting the people because i believe in doing that from coming from am radio taught me how to touch people right. how to get out beyond the studio and shake a hand and say hello mm -hmm. and build a bond building the relationship right. is is important not only with people within our business mm -hmm. the community the community because it's the community that you we, we touched on that earlier but, you, day but you know it's, it's funny um lady actually said that for the homeless like it's like a double-edged sword we do a lot but we don't put that on on, on, on it you got to why yeah. not why not i mean See, i would do it oh, okay I, I would i would do what you know because people you can't expect people to just know right. what you do you know you bring on representatives in the in the industry bring on a representative that's representing the, the homeless uh, someone who's dealing with uh, someone who's dealing with abuse mm -hmm. uh, to get involved with their or the, with their organization and help bring awareness to that there's many people that listen to your show um, that might be going through a situation mm -hmm. might be dealing with a, a tragic you can bring resolution to that bring on a psychologist who might be able to deal with um, um, a person's mental right. instability. We had it so, three times already. Oh, really? We so had it three times. You're, you're doing floral. There you go. That's important. We had we had everything that you're talking about in rotation. Yeah, rotation. Yeah. And today, we were talking about that earlier. Yeah, we, that yeah. this week coming up, we need to get something more community stuff going on, right? Can't go wrong. So to listen to you say that makes us actually feel good because we we on the right we on the right path. And I'm yeah. glad you did tell us because see we we felt like funny like not funny but we felt like is like sometimes people you like oh they only doing that the wrong day on the camera. Like they doing that to show people the homeless but this that's not really in their heart the, how they feel about helping this guy. So we never put it out there. Right. We did it from our heart, you know, fed them and you know, gave us old clothes we had. But you have to let people know. And yeah, not only here. let yeah, your listeners it, know, don't only let your listeners and your viewers know, but let your let the other media outlets know. Yeah. You know, channel twelve mm -hmm. is important. You know, it's important if you yeah. got these if you got this banner up or you got you know, you're giving out T shirts, you're giving out water with, with the logos on the water. Mm -hmm. Let channel uh, twelve know about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Because they again reach the masses. And it yeah, it's do. important that, you know, more people know about the importance of the Beat 139, yeah. because you're more than just this room. You're more than just your broadcast. Right. Your community-based station, your international world uh, program. So, keep touching That's some people. of the jewels that he's giving us that you can ask about. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 I'm going to ask Lenny Green for coming through. He already <laughs> given him all the You know what's crazy? We were just told before you came, I said, I'm going to ask him. Like the, but you, you're doing it on your own. So that, that made me feel good. I like to speak from my heart. That feel good right there, because we, we, we want to learn. We really want to learn. You know what? We want to know. I am still learning. Yeah. There's, if I feel that when a person thinks that they know all the answers, they need to just sit in the corner. Yeah. I don't think we can ever stop growing. When you feel that you've, you've got all the answers and, and no one can tell you anything, mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't associate myself with you because I don't know about that life. Yeah. Right. I think we're all students of life. I, I, at least I am. I'm a student of life. There's nothing that I know too much of that I can't learn more about. Right. Real talk. Man, like this is definitely good for me. Cause now I feel feel good about this, especially with the home. Cause it was like we we wanted to do you it, gotta do but it. then we was like, it, it may come off the wrong way. It can never come off the wrong way. When you when you're helping people, it can never come off the wrong way. And look, my philosophy is if they talked about Jesus, who am I? <laughs> who am I? Exactly. They, I mean, yeah, yeah. you've seen the stories. I've seen yeah, the stories. Yeah, yeah, I read yeah, the word. Yeah. He didn't seem like he did anything wrong. He seemed like he was helping people. Yeah, yeah. But yet, they still crucified him. Crucified. They talked about him. Yeah. They called him, it was blasphemy. Yeah. Hey, look, if they talk about Jesus, yeah. I mean, worry about when they stop talking about you. That's yeah, that's what you should worry about. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. like, when they're talking about me, and I know I'm doing good for people. So let me touch on, um, so the night when we was at uh, Stingrays, mm -hmm. do you do an event like well. that? Confessions of <laughs> right, Exactly. Yeah. Do you do events like that? Normally, we, I, Indy and I, uh, Indy Smith is a young lady that I have been working with for about eight years, nine years now. Um, and when she came to my attention through one of my producers, Global Veto, I um, wanted to have a, a woman's perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we as men, we have our own perspective, and that's cool. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to have a balanced perspective when it comes to love and relationships. I know women are challenged with a lot of situations in relationships. 
we as men are challenged with a lot of situations and relationships. Mm -hmm. To have that balance and to have that extra voice and a, and a woman who has, who's focused, who is intelligent, who obviously can speak strongly on relationship matters, I needed that. Indy Smith uh, worked very well in that lane and we gelled, we had good chemistry together. Mm -hmm. And she was, she brought everything I needed to the table. So we started something up probably around four years ago. Right. It was called The Reality of Love. Mm -hmm. And we did the same thing, but we did it with a celebrity panel, similar to what we do at Circle of Sisters with WBLS. Mm -hmm. They bring out the celebrities, because look, just because they're celebrity don't mean that they're dealing with everyday issues. Exactly. You hear about it all the time, yeah. you know, people getting divorced, mm -hmm. you know, the um, uh, cheating, and cheating the whole nine, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they got money. Right. So we all deal with issues when it comes to relationships. So and with WBLS, we deal with it on that level. So I wanted to start up something at, in the community, mm -hmm. dealing with the community once again, right. and talk about love and relationships. Yeah. And I'm thankful that, you know, the owners at uh, Russ and, and Eric at Stingray allowed us to come in there. It was a free event, as you know, right. and talk about openly and candidly. And you were very verbal and, yeah. and very <laughs> honest and very truthful yeah, yeah, with, yeah, your, yeah. with your passion and how you felt about certain things. And exactly. that's what... That's what helps. Mm -hmm. uh, with, without great communication in our relationships mm -hmm. and women knowing how we feel, we're not going to be able to grow. Right. And, and most and the report that I get from most women is that we as men, we don't, we're not great communicators. Right. So if I create a forum where we're both, you know, both of us can come down and sit at the table, men and women can sit at the table, have a great time. And, and be open and honest sure. and, and with no holes bar conversation about how we really feel about certain things. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we, we may not agree with everything. Right. We may not come to a, a, a right sound point, mm -hmm. but I think it's healthy. We have the right to disagree, right? Yep. So we can agree to disagree and we can walk away with some open dialogue. We can walk away with, you know, well, let me think about that on my own. And you might come back with a different perspective or you might decide to do something in your relationship that you never did before because now you're hearing objective opinions from people who don't know you, mm -hmm. and they're speaking their part, and you already have your position, and now you know you might have a, a, a change of heart about certain things. So we want to create it. We wanted to create dialogue, right. and and what better place than in the village of Harlem right. to do it? So I loved it, man. And it's about that understanding. A lot of people don't communicate, and and when people do communicate, it's like this, yeah, or it's like this, yeah, and, and that's not. It's not this, or it's not like. It's not tight, right. And, and that causes problems with a lot yeah, of relationships. Yeah, I hate texting. Yeah, I hate it. I don't mind texting if we're going to do a message. Right. But we're going to go to a long paragraph. I when I feel if we okay. talk, it, it just, it goes a lot smoother. Because sometimes, say, if I pass this to you, right, mm -hmm. and you read it, mm -hmm. and you put it down. Mm -hmm. And you pass it to Doc, mm -hmm. and he read it, he put it down. Mm -hmm. And you pass it to Shell, mm -hmm. and he read it, put it down. I guarantee we all spoke about what we read, mm -hmm. it'll be different. It would be. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes when you see things on paper or something typed or text, you be like, you can't see no feeling expression behind you it. Can't. So you might say something simple, and I'm thinking you saying something crazy. You take it the wrong but way. But if, man, you talk on the phone or we face to face, this it's a lot. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. The so he know I, I hate it. When we got to go too long, I hate it. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to confess uh, without exposing names, but right. I was in a four year relationship, right. and this young lady was. Communicating more in text. It would drive me up a damn wall. <laughs> like, same thing what you say, bro. Yeah. If it goes beyond a message, yeah. and I'm looking at a book, right. <laughs> I'm, ten messages that you send me on text, I got a problem with that. Me too, man. I and and I you know probably the reason why I stayed in that relationship that long. Yeah. But it didn't last. Yeah. And 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 that's probably one of my biggest pet peeves, dude. Mm -hmm. I yeah. got to you, you have to be a communicator. Yeah, man. And we may not agree. Right. Yeah. But we got to well, let's communicate. But let's yeah. talk. Yeah, let's gotta talk. Communicate. Man. Got to. Yeah. But but these days, everyone yeah. is texting, man. Everyone is on their social. Look, I saw a lady walking down the street, and you probably saw it too. It was on, it was on, it went viral. Mm -hmm. She was walking down the street. I don't know what city she was in. And on her phone, and flipped over the, 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 the grill uh, mm -hmm. going down the steps and fell down and hurt herself. Mm -hmm. Because everyone's so preoccupied. You walk down the street, everyone is on their phone. You walk. Yeah. People walk across the street, the street yeah. on their phone. Yeah. Yeah. I put that shit down yeah. and I walk across It'd the street. You'd be in restaurants. Yeah. Nice family business. I've seen a couple out. Yeah. They sat down. Yeah. I'm sitting there by myself, <laughs> just chilling. And they sat down. And the first thing, 
there was no communication at all. They both yeah. pulled out their phones. Oh. <laughs> like, is this couple gonna talk? Yeah. <laughs> like it, a good fifteen minutes went by. Like yeah. this is crazy. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. And that's why we have, uh, you know, relationships that are just not working out because yeah, no one knows how to communicate. Yeah. No one and, knows to talk. And I always bring that up, even though to family, to friends. Yeah. And sometimes I, I get caught up in it. We do. And I catch do. myself. Do. But I, I hate it. You know, I hey man, you know what? I think there yeah. should be like a portion of the day where, um, especially if you're in a relationship, where the phones are away, and whether that, because you know, here's another thing we don't do like we used to, um, come together as a family and sit down at the yeah. table. Yeah. Yeah. At the not, table. Not, not, not at the table, right? Because right? yeah. that's what they still selling, right? Right. right. At the table, <laughs> and uh, phones away. Yeah. I think that would be my rule. I saw this. I saw this movie, and it's the family was sitting at the table. And the father, everybody had to put their cell phone in the oh, middle wow. table. Yeah. Oh, that's what's up. They all pile their food on um, their phones up at the table, and she said, "Now let's pray and let's eat." Yeah. Nobody touching that phone right yeah. now. And I, I said, "Yeah, I like that, man. That that was good. You did that. Because yeah. if not, the kids gonna be everybody yeah, gonna be yeah, like yeah. this." And it, I think it's just, it's um, social media is big. It is. It's destroying a lot of families too, though. I keep hearing that. Why do you think so? It's destroying it for us, not. Things that's being put on it, as far as being on the phone. Mm -hmm. When people are doing this, they're on social media most mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where the lack of communication comes. That's probably what mm -hmm. both that couple you was talking about. Mm -hmm. That's what they were doing. It probably wasn't tech. It probably was on Instagram and Facebook mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. YouTube and yeah. you know. But if that's the case, like that. why don't you just why go out on a date? Right. <laughs> right. I could do. We could do this at home. Right. You know what I'm saying? Remember, but, at home is bad too. We don't. You know. We but, need to put that down and, and let's let's talk. Let's talk. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? And I, I was in Florida not too long ago, and uh, this is very rare. I get a, a female Uber driver, mm -hmm. and I love it when you know I like a beautiful woman driving. Me. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. So so she was talking, and she's like, um, you know, I forgot how the conversation started, but she's like, oh yeah, I go to I, I when I get I get a chance to dress up when I go to a strip club, but she told she said that she was in a relationship. I'm like. Hold on, hold on. You're in a relationship, right? She's like, yeah. I said, the only time you get a chance to dress up is when you go to a strip club? Mm. She's like, yeah, yeah, my boyfriend likes to go to a strip club. I'm like, hold on. So your boyfriend doesn't just take you out, mm. like, just to a dinner? Mm. No, no, he's, you know, he's working or, you know, he's looking for work. Yeah. How's this relationship? Yeah, I guarantee this relationship is not going to go. No, not too long. Too long. It's, right a, it's an infatuation relationship. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, exactly, yeah. man. You know, so as soon as they get tired of each other, it, it's a wrap. It's know? a wrap, man. It's a wrap. So, man, ask you a question though: Who's been your toughest interview? I can't, I can't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I ask. But, but, but um, let's put it like this: I don't think it behooves anybody, who, mm -hmm. who, even anyone who comes in uh, to the beat one three nine. Yeah. If you're giving, if you're opening up your platform, mm -hmm. as you did with me tonight. Mm -hmm. right. For me to sit in front of you and give you one word answers mm -hmm. that really doesn't give you yeah. any depth yeah. to see that's my whole point that I was question. I was asking I was uh, leading to. So you now we had so far on our show about eighty guests, maybe some more, maybe more. We had a couple who were unprepared, you know. Now the we, guess, we the, the guests, guess the unprepared. guests like me, they had nothing to say. Well, you they know? could have also been nervous. Okay. I mean, that, that's a, I, I don't know who the yeah, guest was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to ask you who the guest yeah. was. But it's a possibility. That's what I call a tough interview. Yes. Yeah, so because we pulling. keep asking you questions and you pulling. have nothing to say. And, and so we had to. So what was their answer? Like when you say nothing to say, what they, and what was the reply? Like you asked well, them a question and what would they say? They'll say anything, but it will be very brief. Yeah. You know, so yeah. we'll keep switching up and trying to, you know, to give them a, a quality interview and, and lead them in because we, we felt they were nervous or they didn't. Sure. They were unprepared. unprepared, but at the same time, you're cutting your interview short because we like, damn, we're not the end What are we going to do? You're exhausted, exhausted everything. You know what I'm right. no, and, that's, and, that's what I call a tough interview. Right. No, that, that can be a tough interview, but, you know, the same thing happens uh, in my world, not as much as it used to. Yeah. In the very, very beginning, it used to be like that. But he, I think one of my biggest flaws, because I loved people who, uh, I observed people who did interviews. I remember I used to watch Brian Gumble on mm -hmm. NBC. I thought he was a good interviewer. Yeah, he was. Uh, I used to watch Johnny Carson 
Mm -hmm. uh, thought he was a good interviewer. I, I like David Letterman style, you know, and I still yeah. watch people interview people. I like interviewing people. Mm -hmm. That's why it's very odd for me to be sitting here. Mm -hmm. and you guys interview me because I never. There it is. I rarely. Well, the B139, we set it up a standard. Mr. Lindsay. That was a standard. Yes. But I, I, love, um, I love it when people are um, inquisitive. And, and, and thorough with the interviews. I think one of my biggest flaws, though, uh, what I had to work on was that I wasn't listening to mm. what people were saying to me. Mm -hmm. I would just, ha I would have come in with my, I did my homework, mm -hmm. but I wasn't listening because when I went back to critique myself, I realized, oh man, well, he talked about that. I could have piggyback with Piggy what back. he just talked yeah. about. But you stuck to but I show. stuck to my script yeah. so much, yeah. I was just like, okay, and uh, by the way, da, 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 da. Uh, okay, and yeah. horrible, yeah. I was horrible. Yeah. So, you know, I've learned to do my homework, yeah. uh, and, and I've learned to, you know, if, if this opportunity, as it has presented itself tonight, mm -hmm. that I would be on the seat, I make sure, look, you're giving me a platform to speak about my career and, 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 and just talk in general. And yeah. that's, a, that's a privilege. Yeah. Um, some people, maybe mega stars, maybe feel, man, you know, I really don't need this. That's them. I'm not a star. Right. You know? yeah. I'm a regular dude. I do a radio well, thing. You, you, you start us, man. Yeah. <laughs> you no, start us. No, no. Yeah, in, in, in a sense, we uh, came on a Friday. We're college. In, in a sense, <laughs> like, um, not like a superstar, like something like that, but in a sense, was. We admire your work. We, you know, we admire your work, and we respect your work. You know, in radio, you. you know, and all the things that you achieve, and even the things that you're saying to us tonight. Me and Doc are taking heed to a lot of stuff that you're saying. You know, and we're learning some things at the same time. Because, like you said, we're every day we're growing. Yeah, we're getting better. Yeah, you know, and, and that's why we appreciate you coming on the show. Oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I also appreciate because it's like you paying it forward. So people don't understand mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. like. You don't have to, like you said, you feel you're a regular guy and stuff like that. Like I said, you ain't had to be here. But, you know, we growing. We ain't over had a year in yet. Mm -hmm. And for you, that's paying it forward. We love to give. Mm -hmm. Like, all the time, we were like, what, what we can do? We want to always give. A lot of, we gave a lot of people their first interview. People, to be honest, they, sh I ain't going to say they shouldn't have been, but they should have had a little more of their catalog built up. Mm -hmm. And we basically... They groundbreaking. We gave them that this platform, and they wasn't really to our criteria. Our criteria basically is people like striving for success, but right. people who also we want to see they grind. Sure. Like so, we want to That's see important. a pattern of work. We ain't going to jump. You did okay. You just did a song. Okay, come on. Right. Right. No, right. we want to see the work. You got to put, put the work. The, in. Put the work in. Yeah, put the work. So it's times we 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 jumped the gun and we slid people in. Well, you know what? I've done the same thing, uh, and, and so. A thousand steps start with one, right? Mm -hmm. So when you give a person uh, an opportunity to learn a, a, or an opportunity that you're exposing their music, hopefully they take it as a gift because exactly. that's what it is. It's a exactly. gift. And, and hopefully they grow. Um, again, with the downsides, you know, no more record companies like we used to have back in the day. Mm -hmm. A lot of the artists that come out now are underdeveloped. They used to be, and, and I had the privilege of talking to Smokey Robinson from time to time. Mm -hmm. And he told me about the early beginnings of Motown and how Motown was. And if you ever see him in concert, you, he does a segment in his shows how wonderful, like you would get, they said they would get in Motown at 10 a.m. in the morning and they would leave like at 6 or 7 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And it was basically a school. And Barry Gordy and they had choreographers there and, and they would learn media development how to come out, mm -hmm. speak to you guys. Mm -hmm. They would know how to dress. Yeah. They would learn, need to know how to um, be polished. Mm -hmm. We don't have that anymore. No. So most artists of the artists, right? artists develop. Right. Now the artists come any kind of way. You know, right. they, yeah. Some of them are good. Right. Some of them are very, very good. But yeah. then you find yeah, those in artist like, development. Uh, you need but to work. In, in the NBA, on sports, yeah. they have development mm -hmm. leagues. Yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. D leagues, D leagues, and all that. They development league, like the Knicks. You know, New York Knicks, but then they have a Knicks. They carry the name Knicks, but they Westchester Knicks or something uh, like that. League, so they yeah. they're right, they get these players ready to transition into the NBA. Some make it, and some don't. Not, but they just not, not pushing them into the league like the, they uh, used to. Kids who coming in from college, exactly. they have to do an orientation, exactly. like a, 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 yeah. a whole week exactly. orientation. Yeah. They teach you how to keep the quality. Yeah, is that just in the NBA? Yeah, because well, football I, don't do it. I, I, Baseball does it. 
and, and I, I NBA know, does. I, I know NBA do, and they also they they also get people how to spend their money, like how to be responsible, not just to mm. go. They they have like all types of sim seminars where um, they show screens like uh, they do role plays. I, I think it was great. I saw like behind the scenes, it's great. They can do a role play how. Guys have this money here, yeah. and then it's gone yeah. like two years after you retire. You know. I think the NFL needs to do this. Hmm? The NFL needs that. Yes, they do. Yes, they do because yes. they look, do. you know, we, we forget, and when we're looking at TV, you know, the angle of uh, how they shoot it, you don't think these guys are big. Like right. I don't know what they ate. <laughs> that I didn't eat to make them be like they're giants, yeah, they're they're giants. and they're huge, yeah, they're and they're kids, young boys, young they're kids. Boys. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, what did I not eat? eat? Pancakes eight, eight, three times a day. Well, so. they must have put something different in our pancakes because, like, <laughs> I got I got big feet and I didn't make yeah. six feet. You right, know what right, I'm saying? Right, so right. that's a problem. But but these but a lot of people forget that these are kids and they need to be taught. Now, exactly. you know, they've been pampered a lot, especially with the schools, because mm -hmm. you know when these schools. They look at you as a dollar sign, right. especially if they see that you have some skills and you have some talent, mm -hmm. and they want to make that money out of you and get championships. That's how they make more money. That's yeah. how these schools make more money. So they, they really don't care about how you are as a person, but I think it's really important that you have these, like I would bring the, the retirees, the, mm -hmm. the old heads of uh, NBA, uh, NFL, mm -hmm. and assign them right. like a year or two years to a rookie. Right. And that's your like, big sort of like an orientation. Okay. More like than, a big brother. Right. Like, a like a big, big brother. brother. Like he's, he has to watch you. He And, and you have any problems, you go to him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because he's done it. Big right. brother, yeah. Important for those, again, who have walked before you. Yeah. And like you said, that salary, you can give him, like you said, for a year. Like you could bring a, a former player in for a year. And do Keep that. his nose out of trouble because yeah. you, know, you hear a lot of stuff that goes down. That NFL is crazy. NFL is crazy. A lot it's of these crazy. But you know what's crazy, yeah. though? I was watching uh, Gilbert and Reina's podcast, and he's like, he in the club, in the football, and I've been in clubs, football players, they do buy all these bottles. Mind you, they, they contract not guaranteed. Right. And they, they, they uh, lifespan in the NFL is only like sure. five years. So then he said, they spend all around. He's like, what the hell is this? Little Gilbert is funny. <laughs> and he said, like, he said, I get, I get, I'm getting 100 million. He said, I only got like a one bottle and some waters and, and orange juice and pineapple juice. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I ain't going to let you out. Dude, I'm going to show you who I am. And he said, he started buying bottles. But he's like, I don't understand the NFL players. They ain't even making the money we making, and he said they always like ball out in clubs. And I, I seen it myself. You know, I, I don't want to throw. I don't want to throw anybody personally under the bus. I mean, but I just feel that you're coming into the league. It's big money. Mm -hmm. You you go from rags to riches instantly. Right. Once the NFL happens, if you're drafted, yeah. You know, whether your first pick or fifteenth pick, yeah. you're gonna make more money than what you had before we leave out of this exactly. building, right? Exactly. If you're picked, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're on your way. You are now an NBA, an NFL, yeah. a, a, an MLB player. Right. That's a different arena. Yeah. You know, you. I don't know if you got true friends. Right? Yeah. You right. you need that one friend who's gonna keep it real with yeah. you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully he stays around you, exactly. so he keeps you balanced. Cause you know, everybody everybody becomes your friend instantly, and everybody ain't your friend. Yeah. You know that. So, well, they always your friend when you got it. Exactly. Yeah. You find out your real friends when things get rough. Oh, don't you? I've been hearing they yeah. pumping up your uh, Super Bowl party all all week on the radio. Yeah, yeah. They, so they, can they, you they, get into that for the listeners? So, so obviously the big game is going down this Sunday. It's in Brooklyn, uh, at Rustic Tavern. Rustic Tavern is four seventy one Decal Avenue. Um, black owned establishment. Brother Fonts uh, has this establishment for a while, like, probably over ten years. A quaint little lounge. Uh, bar, restaurant, and they have a couple of screens, and uh, DJ Mitch, the people policer from WBLS, he's going to be on ones and twos, and we'll have some tickets to give away and some t-shirts to give away, and I'm a, I'm a New York guy, mm -hmm. so that means I'm not going for the Patriots. <laughs> if Mickey Mouse was playing, I would be going for Mickey Mouse if they were playing the Patriots, so yeah, I'm going for the man. LA Rams. I get the same feeling. And, and, if you're, and if I hate to say this, and you probably may not like me after this, I'm not a Dallas Cowgirl, I mean Cowboy fan. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a Giants fan first, Exactly. I'm a Jets fan second, yeah. and for those who say you can't have two teams, Yes, I can. <laughs> Both of them from New York. So you got who now? I'm Giants first. Right. Jets second. Okay. And when they're both out, right. there's only one other team I go for. Who that? Steelers. Okay. Yo, you know what I was just about to say? That. A lot of people like the Steelers. Well, let me tell you why. When I was a kid, probably around your son's age, my last name is Green. Mm -hmm. 
I swore a stealer, right. but my last name, yeah, that was yeah. big for me. Mean, mean Joe Green. Green. Mean Joe Green, mean Joe number, Green. 75. number 75. And that stuck. So that's what, that was my connection. Yeah. Going back that far. That's like me. My name, my name, Kareem, and I started liking the wow. Lakers because Kareem had the Jabbar. Yeah, I don't like the Lakers either, but I understand your reason. I got it. I got it. Because I'm like, oh, you got my name. You got your name. So what I about you, like brother? The I'm more, I'm, I'm, I bleed blue, man. <laughs> I'm Yankees. I'm Giants. Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. And I'm a Laker. Oh, wow. I'm in the middle of two Lakers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> help me, ladies and gentlemen. Help Kobe, me. man. <laughs> Kobe's my guy, man. So LeBron is that? Nah. Wow. I respect his game. Yeah, I respect his game. Okay. But, and I respect him, what he does in the com his community. Oh, yeah, I love, love that. that. Oh, I, man, love I love that. that, too. I love that. I respect him, what he does as a husband yeah, and I as a father. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. But certain little off-the-court things he did, I didn't really appreciate. I bandwagon. He bandwagon. He got jumping it. around. He started the bandwagon thing. He made it famous, you know? Got you got me. To each his own, because he's a businessman. He's entitled to go where he want to go. That's the only thing I got against him. But other than that, he's the best player in the league, hands down. Yeah, no, he's a good and one. You, I give him his pride. He's the king. He's the king. But he ain't okay. do it like Kobe, though. Oh. Well, then, then <laughs> Imagine. Well, right. well, what about Jordan? Jordan is, no, Jordan, is Jordan, 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 <laughs> but you right. want Jordans though. Right. Jordan is still popular, man. Yeah, he ain't been popular. on the court in so long. Yeah. Little kids, they, they yeah. want Jordans. Yeah. There, was, there was a player, I think, that <laughs> I can't remember who challenged Jordan. Mm -hmm. And um, he stepped up to the challenge. Yeah. Took him out. Took him out. He still got, he still got flavor. Yeah, he do. He still got flavor, yeah. man. He's yeah. the GOAT. But he said there's no iron team, but it's iron win. Wow. <laughs> I like that. When he was at the. Um, when he went to the Hall of Fame, yeah. and they said, Jordan, you know, he said, there's no iron team. He said, yeah, but there's an iron win. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody started yeah. laughing and stuff yeah, like yeah. that, you know? I mean, look, but now he's the Messiah, man, you know? The Messiah. But um, tell everybody where you can find you at, Lenny. I'm really easy. Um, I'm on all social media platforms. Um, and don't get mad at me but when you pull up Facebook and you see several pages pop up. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to work it out. Facebook is kind of difficult. Right. But you can catch me on Facebook at Lenny Green. Mm -hmm. Catch me on Instagram and Twitter. Right. At Lenny Green, mm -hmm. uh, and that's where I stop. I, I'm not on um, Snapchat. No, I'm not doing that yet. Right. So, but you can find me there. And coming soon is will be my website. Right. Um, probably before or by spring. You got any projects that you're working on right now that know that the people need to know about? Well, yeah. The, the biggest project I'm working on right now is preparing for my 15th annual Lenny Green Family Day. Mm -hmm. It happens in Bed Stuy, in Brooklyn, uh, the first Sunday in August, which this year will be August 4th. Mm -hmm. um, it's my way of giving back to the community. Right. Uh, we 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 have just community based everything. We bring out uh, health screenings. We bring out uh, job recruiting. Uh, myself and singer Raheem Devon we sponsor at least four or five children, high school kids, to be a part of the Get on the Bus College tour, yeah. where they can visit historically black colleges and university during their during their break in in Easter. Uh, to give them a hope or a desire, because sometimes children have to see. They have to see. Yeah. You got to be able to see what, what's ahead. And if you can get them early enough to see and envision, um, you might be able to, for them to, you know, continue to further their education. Do, man. We, we, we might do something like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm listening to this. Yeah. That's <laughs> so, yeah, so that's a big thing. And then because it's the 15th annual, uh, we're going to bring some special celebrity friends to be a part of it, some local uh, talent to be a part of it, mm -hmm. and just make it a big, spectacular day. Family is really important. It's the yeah. quintessential aspect to all of our lives. Um, I also pay homage to my mom's uh, life and legacy by acknowledging six, eight, I'm sorry, eight women, eight mothers, mm -hmm. um, who unfortunately have had the task of uh, raising their children by themselves, because yeah. yeah. that was reflective of my mom. My mom raised myself, my older brother, and a, my younger adopted brother. Um, I didn't have any sisters, unfortunately. So uh, we, I have the Mama Green Women of Dignity Award that I give out to w eight women. You said, well, why eight? Well, my mom's birthday was in August. Right. Um, and that's the significant reason why I choose eight women. And um, we give them a beautiful award. 
uh, with their name on it, mm -hmm. and we give them flowers because I believe in give. I, I always give my mom flowers, yeah. just because, mm -hmm. not because it's a yeah. particular reason, but just because. I believe in giving flowers, and right. uh, some 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 people may say uh, you're corny or whatever. You're soft. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm the quiet, soft guy. So I don't care. Too, but I don't <laughs> hey, look, man. You know, I want you to be able to smell your roses, yeah. enjoy the moment. Yeah, I know they die, right? But what lasts forever? Exactly. Nothing lasts forever. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it becomes a fun day community event in Brooklyn, and and I hope everyone comes out. So that's the biggest event, and then Shayla who's on WBLS, and I were working on a, a destination trip for mm -hmm. the summer as well. Last year we did a cruise, we had a few islands, we brought a couple of celebrities out, mm -hmm. including CC Pedersen, yeah. and uh, this year we'll make it a destination. So we're looking at a few islands, and um, hopefully within the next couple of weeks you'll be hearing about that. Yeah, I might have to, I might have to join you on that too. Hey man, we love, love, love yeah, 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 love that for that. Because I like cruise ships, I haven't yeah. been on island. No, no, we're not going to do a cruise, we're going to do a destination. Why well, so a destination, destination too? That's okay, right. yeah. yeah. I think it's important that we travel, man, yeah. and, and see everything beyond our community. Exactly. Yeah. Why not? So let me ask you for a, a, a favor, right? Can okay. you tell everybody what's the number one podcast show in Harlem, right? Did you want, brother? Oh, the number one podcast show that I know about is the Beat 139. Word. Yeah, it is. And I really yeah, appreciate these brothers for having me on. <laughs> and that was very, very unexpected, but very well appreciated. And I'm humbled and thankful for this opportunity just to share myself with you. Thanks to have you Thank on the show. My honor. Anytime, brother. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah. Thank you, my brother. Anytime, man. A lot of Continue good. success and happiness yeah. and keep touching the community. Thank you, Definitely. brother. My man. Yes. Damn.